Hi, I'm Alexandra Alter with the Wall Street Journal. Joining us today is Liz Gilbert, author of Eat, Pray, Love, and author of a new novel, The Signature of All Things. Thank you so much for being with us today. Liz. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Um, so this novel is very different from anything you've written before. It's a historical epic. It's set in the 19th century, and it centers on a female botanist named Alma Whitaker. Where did this come from? It's so different from your previous books, which obviously were yeah. memoirs, and the fiction that you wrote previously was also mostly contemporary. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I decided I wanted to go back to writing fiction, which is sort of where I got my start. And I decided um, I wanted to write the biggest and most ambitious book that I possibly could. And so before I even had a theme, I had a sense that I wanted something of great scope. Um, I had recently become a passionate gardener, so I knew that whatever I was going to write was going to have to be about plants or else it wouldn't hold my interest. And then the really compelling piece of it was that I discovered this family heirloom, this 1784 edition of Captain Cook's Voyages that had been in my family for years. And it was um, handed over to me, and I became captivated by Captain Cook, but even more so by Joseph Banks, who was his chief botanist, who came on those journeys with him. And I had never heard of the idea of botanical exploration before. And once I heard of it and realized there was this amazing window between the end of the Age of Enlightenment and the beginning of the Industrial Revolution that was like action-adventure botany, right. I knew I was going to have to set a novel there. <laughs> and I read that you actually scribbled your name in that book when you were four, so you sort of laid claim to the story yeah, early on. I destroyed the book's value at the same time as <laughs> Uh, as claiming the book right. for myself. So what was it like, you know, after a 13-year break from writing fiction to go back with such a huge story that required years and years of research? How, and how did you develop the voice, which is um, it's appropriate to the period, but it's also very sort of contemporary. I mean, the yeah. internal thoughts and the dialogue sounds contemporary. Um, it was intimidating, you know, um, and I think because I was so intimidated, I really over-prepared. I feel like this book the preparation for it is like the architecture of a Victorian bridge where they didn't understand physics yet and so they just were like let's just throw all the materials at this thing and hope it holds up which is why I spent three and a half years doing research about 19th century botany, about whaling, the missionary movement, um, transcendentalism, abolition, um, pornography from that era, like you know, everything that I could learn about what was going on in the 19th century. Um, and then I also was inspired by reading Hilary Mantel's amazing Booker Prize winning um, novel Wolf Hall, where I realized that she, writing about Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell, was not pretending to be writing a book that was written in the 16th century. She was writing a modern book about the 16th century. And it's a subtle shift, but it somehow freed me up to, to feel like I could use my own voice, but write about this distant time. That's so interesting. And you mentioned the pornography, and there is a <laughs> lot of sex of a wide variety in this book. Yeah. And, um, that's not something that you see in George Eliot or Charles Dickens. So yes. how did you approach writing about yeah. sex in the 19th century? And was that also intimidating? Well, you kind of see it in Charlotte Bronte. She's like the kinkiest of, of all the 19th century <laughs> writers. They couldn't write about it because they couldn't write about it. Right. You know, I mean, they alluded to it in really oblique ways, but there was, you know, there were all sorts of prohibitions on actually writing that sort of material. But we know that people were having sex. We know that people were lusty <laughs> and carnal. We did not invent this in the right. 20th century. And one of the things that I felt free about in terms of writing sort of from this period looking back at that period was that I could open up those doors and in my case closets that um, uh, that, that couldn't have been open to earlier writers and um, I mean, it was a little intimidating, but I had a really great lunch with a romance novelist who writes um, Regency oh, romances. An okay. And I was like, how do you, you know, and she said it's really simple. You just have to make sure that the characters act like themselves and do what they would do. Um, and once I had that kind of piece, I was able to let them do what they would do. Okay. Um, <laughs> you've said also that the central character, Alma, is based partly on you. Can you explain how she resembles you? Yeah, I mean, I should probably start by saying how she doesn't resemble me, um, which is that she's a scientist and she is in every way an empirical thinker. Um, she is driven by a search for a quest, a quest really, for the facts and the truth. Um, and I am sort of a more mystical thinker and I'm um, I'm always like on a romantic voyage and she's always on a sort of factual voyage so in that way she doesn't resemble me but what we share I think is a kind of burning curiosity to know the world and um, at, at any cost you know with any amount of energy to explore as much as we possibly can. Uh -huh. uh, what are you working on now? Um, well, I'm working on promoting this book right now because it's really, um, because people don't know me as a novelist and I feel like I have to sort of bring the book to them in person, especially to the readers who know me from Meet, Pray, Love and sort of invite them to come on this journey as well. So that's what I'll be doing for several months to come. But um, after having written about this kind of buttoned up, corseted up era of history, I think I want to write a novel about a wilder time. So I'm thinking about writing something about... Um, 
oh, let's just call it Girls Gone Wild in the Jazz Age. <laughs> oh, that sounds really yeah, good. Yeah, sort of unbuttoning everybody and letting them, you know, really go. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that also. Thank you so much for joining Thank us today. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here.